and welcome back to Avocet Math. In this uh, last uh, few video lectures, we're going to explore a, a simple and elegant uh, theory for generating Pythagorean triples. Uh, so that's essentially a nonlinear type of Diophantine equation that's uh, quite useful and uh, shows up in some of the AIM and US AMO level of testing. So uh, let's take a look at uh, the Pythagorean theorem that we are pretty familiar with, x squared plus y squared equal to z squared. Now in this case we're looking for integer solutions x, y, and z and actually looking for integer solutions greater than zero. It turns out that when either x, y, or z is zero uh, those solutions are not terribly interesting so we're going to eliminate those from our uh, solution set. Uh, we're also looking for the case where the greatest common divisor of x, y, and z is equal to one and the reason why we look for that is that we, we know that if we have a Pythagorean triple like for instance 3, 4, 5 then um, the, the double or the triple of that uh, triangle say the 6, 8, 10 or uh, the 9, uh, 12, 15 are also Pythagorean triples but again we know how to generate those by just multiplying all the numbers by some constant multiple so we're going to restrict our our solution set to uh, x, y, and z that are what are called reduced Pythagorean triples, uh, triples that don't share a common factor. So one of the first steps in attacking any of these types of problems is to try to explore uh, the pattern that can appear uh, in the x, y, and z in terms of even and odd numbers. Uh, sometimes we refer to that as parity. Uh, whether it be even or odd, we, we, we kind of recall that sometimes a parity relationship. Uh, so let's uh, take a look at what possibilities are available to us. We could have x, y, and z all be even. They could all be odd. There could be one odd number, and we could put that odd number to the right side of the equation. There could be one odd number, and we put that odd number to the left side of the equation. Uh, likewise, there could be just one even number that we put to the right side of the equation and one even number that we put to the left side of the equation and that's that pretty much covers all the combinations and possibilities that are possible uh, we didn't really specify whether the x or the y is even or odd in these cases here and say here because it doesn't really matter x and y are interchangeable and we can kind of choose those without loss of generality so uh, Let's take a look at these cases one by one and see which ones are possible. Uh, even plus an even is certainly able to generate an even number, but uh, this basically tells us that the, the x, y, and z all share the common factor of 2, and that means that we don't have a reduced Pythagorean triple here. We don't have the greatest common divisor satisfying the condition of being equal to 1. So these are essentially not uh, reduced Pythagorean triples, and we're not going to consider those. Uh, the case of odd plus an odd equaling an odd, we know that two odd numbers added can never equal an odd, so we can eliminate that possibility. Likewise, two even numbers can never equal an odd, so let's eliminate that possibility. Likewise, odd plus an even uh, will always equal an odd. Eliminate that possibility. Now these two last cases uh, do look possible at, at first glance. An odd plus an odd can certainly equal an even. An even plus an odd can certainly equal an odd. So let's explore these a little further. Let's take the first case here and try to write out what an odd square plus an odd square would look like and see if we can compare that to what an even squared would look like. So an odd squared would be something of the form, say, 2n plus 1 squared plus some other integer, say, 2m plus 1 squared and we want to see if we can make that equal to some even number, say 2k squared. So let's expand each of these terms out. 4n squared plus 4n plus 1 plus 4m squared plus m plus 1 is equal to 4k squared. And let's try to gather the terms that are um, have the factor of 4 in front of them. In this case, we have uh, 4 and uh, pull out that factor of 4, n squared plus m squared plus n plus m plus 2 is equal to 4k squared. Now, at this point, we can observe something uh, critical in our 
uh, kind of line of reasoning here, what we notice is that we have some term here which when we divide by 4 leaves a remainder of 0. On the right side we have a term which when we divide by 4 also leaves a remainder of 0. But this term here when we divide by 4 now leaves a remainder of 2. And what we can conclude is that this plus this can never equal this. And we can see that if we take this uh, this equation one step further and we divide both sides by the common factor or I'm sorry the uh, the integer of 4 and when we divide each side by the integer of 4 we, we're left with an integer value for this term an integer value for this term but now this term is 2 divided by 4 and that's a fractional value so we can never have an integer plus a fractional value uh, equal to an integer value so essentially we found that uh, 2 odd squared can never actually equal an even squared and we can eliminate this as a possibility as well. So all we're left with now at this point is just one possibility for how these numbers can combine in the Pythagorean relationship. So we can explore this further by assigning the x value to being even, the y value to being odd, and the z value to being odd. And again, the assignment for x and y is somewhat arbitrary. We could definitely swap them but it doesn't really matter. We can basically assign x without loss of generality. So let's go ahead and do that. And when we put uh, uh, and examine the uh, equation for an even, odd, and odd, it occurs to us that we probably want to group the two odd terms together. So let's go ahead and do that and write this equation with the y squared term now moved over to the right-hand side of the equation. And that leaves us with x squared equal to z squared minus y squared. And we can sort of anticipate what the next step will be. We certainly want to take advantage of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic wherever possible. So let's go ahead and factor the right side equation, right side of this equation, as z plus y times z minus y. And now we can observe something uh, further in that we see that we have the square of an even number. And so the square of an even number will basically have a a 2 that also gets brought up to the square and so the square of an even number as it turns out will always be divisible by 4 so this leaves a whole number we have z plus y that's an odd plus an odd number so two odd numbers added together will be an even number so we can take this and divide it by 2 and still be left with a whole number and we have the difference of two odd numbers also uh, uh, giving rise to an even number so we can divide this term by 2 and still be left with an even number. So at this point, we'll, we'll break off uh, uh, this, this one lecture uh, uh, episode, and we'll pick up uh, here uh, on the next uh, video lecture. But we've gotten pretty far. We've basically taken a Pythagorean relationship. We've defined uh, the exact solution set that we're looking for. We've reduced the possibilities of the solutions that we, we need to examine to the case of uh, an x being even, a y being odd, a z being odd, and we have sort of the general equation that we're going to tackle further in the next video. So we'll see you then, and we should be able to wrap it up at that point. Take care. Bye.